Uh, all right, well, as usual, uh, I'd say the Chiefs look uh, pretty good. Um, you know, it's a really good football team. You know, Andy's done a done a great job of this. You know, rebuilding this organization. Um, and it's had a lot of success, and you know, it's having it again this year. Uh, got a lot of a lot of good players, but um, you know, Andy does a he does a great job uh, offensively. This is you know about as tough a team to prepare for as there is. They have a lot of good players, but they are very well coached. They um, have an excellent scheme, and um, you know, Andy know, really knows how to attack defenses and um, you know create problems, and uh, so they do a really good job of that. But Solid in all three um, areas. You know, very strong coverage team on special teams. Uh, punt and kickoff coverage, you know, as good as there is in the league. And, you know, explosive in their return game. So, you know, that's a problem, too. Defensively, you know, they've got the takeaways. And, um, you know, they've, they've hit the plus side on that. And uh, that's, you know, always a big key for their defense when they, when they can take the ball away. So, got a lot of, um, you know, ball hawking type players over there on the defensive side of the ball. And that's... You know, we're going to have to do a good job there of making sure that we, we take good care of it. And, um, you know, this will be a good, good opportunity, good challenge for us. Thank you. Any other questions? Ben Brown? Uh What are some of the characteristics you see out of this defense now that Steve Spagnuolo is uh, the coordinator? Yeah, I'd say it's Steve's scheme. You know, it's a lot of pressure for its own. Um, I don't play more zone, but they can play man, so. You know, he'll mix it up, but they, they keep the pressure on. And they turn the ball over. Is it markedly different from what we saw in January? Yeah, it's a totally different scheme. Totally different. Yeah. So is, sorry, so is that tape useful at this point? Yeah, so some of the same players are there, yeah. Henry McCann? Bill, um, I was thinking about something you said in that NFL 100 interviews about taking away your opponent's strengths. Um, and when you have a guy like Stefan Gilmore, who you can put sort of one on one with maybe the strongest player on opposing deep offense, what does that do for you schematically? Um, you know, as you develop a game plan for your own defense. Yeah. Well, each week you you know you have your players and they have their players, and each week it's a different matchup. So let's say every week you try to figure out what to, what the best way to go is, um, and there's a lot of factors that go into that. It's not just players, it's scheme, it's where they play and what their strengths are. And each player has different strengths and weaknesses. So it, it's strictly a week to week thing. I imagine when you don't, you only have to dedicate one player to, to stop, you know, their best player as opposed to two, a double team. That hopefully creates flexibility. Yeah, again, it depends on the situation. It's a lot easier said than done. There's, there's 20, 20 other guys out there besides those two guys, so it's not just you know, it's not like basketball where you only got five, you know, five guys on each side. You got, you got 11 players. You got a lot of different formations, a lot of different things that go on. It's, it's not quite that easy. I wish it was, but it's really not. Jack Kai, have you seen them mix in Nicole Hardman this season? Well, Herbert played a lot, uh, you know, due to some injuries, and then he also plays in rotation uh, when everybody's there. So it uh, looks like they, you know, they use him in different spots. I think they do all their receivers. They move them all around. But he's a very explosive guy. He's tough with the ball in his hands. 20 yards a catch. I mean. okay. Bill, on, on their receiver group, it looks like they have a bunch of guys who contribute, but... I don't think they ever have more than three on the field at, at one time. That rotation that you just mentioned, are they able to maybe stay fresher than, than defenses? Do you see them trying to use their, their receivers that way so that they you know, can maybe run down the field uh, with a, maybe fresher legs? Yeah, I don't know. You have to ask Andy about that. I don't know. I mean, there's four receivers out there on every play, so. Well, I mean, call Kelsey whatever you want. He's one of the best receivers in the league. Okay. He's their leading receiver. You can put him up against any receiver in the league, and statistically he'll match up with any other, anybody you want to get put him against, basically, over the last five years. So you can call him whatever you want to call him. Okay, so you got four receivers out there on a back, basically. 
on a lot of plays, not all the plays, but on a lot of plays. So they're hard to match up against. They, you know, they utilize two tight ends. They utilize the fourth receiver. Um, they utilize multiple backs. And wherever they put out there, it's usually caused a problem. So how, how, how Andy uses them and all that rotation and so forth. I mean, it's not like there's five guys running deep on every play. I mean, that that, that isn't really what they do. Um, so. Levin Reed? I'm not sure he's the best in the league, but how good is Patrick Mahomes when he leaves the pocket? But if he's able to keep his eyes down the field to distribute the ball to the weapons that he has to play. Yeah, he's, he's dangerous on extended plays. He's got a great arm, can throw it all over the field. Uh, he can run, he's athletic. So he's definitely, those extended plays are definitely a problem. Is it, is it, because he's not looking to run most of the time. Is it strange how he's, not say strange, but is it different how he's, you still have to cover up those guys who are maybe behind him because you can throw across the field? Yeah, one of the times an extended play, it's, Usually everybody comes into play. I mean, you can't just drop them. So and he can run now. I mean, if he wants to pull it down and run, he can definitely run. There's plenty of examples of that. Uh, there's more examples of him throwing than there are running, but he, you know, he can run too. So the extent of plays are a problem. Andrew Callahan. Uh, <clears throat> Bill, you mentioned in the past that Andy is as good a coach as there is when it comes to adapting and incorporating new concepts into his offense from whatever level. How, if at all, have you seen him do that this season? I'll just watch him play. I mean, roll up and down the field against everybody. So, Andy's a game plan coach. He's not going to do the same thing every day, every week. He's not going to keep running the same plays over and over again. I mean, that's just not what they do. They attack defenses. And each week's a different defense, and so it changes the attack a little bit based on how those how he matches up against those teams and what they do. But he's yeah, he's as good a play caller and game planner as anybody I've coached against. I mean, he consistently you know, creates problems. I mean, look, he has a lot of great players. That's that helps, but he does a great job of putting them in good positions and creating problems for the defense and attacking weaknesses. He's very good. Are there new elements this season compared to the past years that, are, that he's introduced to this system? Yeah, he's got continuously has little wrinkles and, you know, finds ways to do the things that they know how to do, but really change the look for the defense, make it a little harder to identify. Basically, I can put in a new offense every week. I mean, that's they don't do that. They do what they do. They have a lot of variation. They have a broad playbook. It's you know, it's not like it's two or three pages now. They got a lot of things they can do, um, but yeah, he throws wrinkles in and keeps you off balance, and again, finds ways to challenge the way that your defense matches up or covers or supports or checks or whatever it is. Whatever you do, he he finds ways to attack it. He's very good at it. Joe Kiyama. Bill, I just want to get your thoughts on uh, Pro Bowl fullback Anthony Sherman. He's a local guy out of North Dakota. Just your thoughts on him and his career. A versatile player. Plays in the kicking game. Um, plays a little bit on offense. Can run, catch, block. He's, he's got good versatility. His primary role for them is in the kicking game, but he shows up a little bit on offense. Mark Daniels? How important has James White been to this program over the last really four or five years? And is he as consistent off the field as he has been on the field? Yeah, James is really consistent. Yeah, he's one of our most consistent, dependable guys. You know, captain in the last couple of years. I think that really speaks to his leadership and you know the respect that his teammates have for him. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, he does a great job for us. Kevin <laughs> uh, back to Kelsey. What, what about him makes him unique as a route runner? Like he's good at everything. He's big. He's fast. It's good after the catch. Does a really good job of gaining leverage on defenders. Uh, he also sets off a lot of other, creates space for other players as well. He's a smart player, very smart. So good at all of it. Hard to tackle when he gets the ball. Say his route tree is bigger than most tight ends that he would face in a given week. It's bigger than anybody in the league. 
He's got every tight end route. He's got every receiver route. I mean, there's not a route he doesn't run. So, does everything but run routes out of the backfield. Probably, probably does some of that, but they may be saving that. I don't know. But he's got, yeah, he's got all the receivers. They put him out. He's a receiver, so he runs all the receiver routes. And he's a tight end. He runs all the tight end routes. Have you seen from Jacoby Myers as far as his mindset goes and continually trying to gain Tom's trust and also learn the offense? Yeah, you know, Jacoby is a smart guy. It's not a question of learning. It's you know, experience and each each week for a young players, uh, learning experience. Match up against different guys, see different coverages, see different situations come up. But he works hard at it. And, you know, he's... Learning is not an issue for him. Going back to Mahomes, are there ways that maybe you've seen him develop or change even just since January in ways that don't show up on a stat sheet? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, had a great year last year. He's missed a couple games this year, but he's, you know, he's played very well this year too, so. Yeah, I don't know the maturity and all the day-to-day -day stuff. I mean, I'm, we're not around him, so I would have no idea how to comment on that. But on the field, he's he's an outstanding player. I mean, he makes plays very few other players in the league can make at his position. Okay. Bill, what makes um, Tyron Matthew a, a challenging player for an offense to prepare for? And I think there's a third team that um, you guys have seen him play with now. Is he being used? And essentially this the same way or there's some differences there? yeah i mean he's he's a very instinctive player he just recognizes things and you know pulls the trigger and reacts to it quickly and you gotta kind of got to be careful with him see he can anticipate things and you know he's got good quickness good ball skills he's a good athlete so he can be in one spot but anticipate a play and you know drive on it very quickly and and get there and make a play on the ball or make a tackle or break it up or so it's you gotta you know I think a lot of it's just you know instincts really he's he has a good feel for the game and he anticipates and reacts very quickly ben uh, Bill the numbers uh, with the run offense probably aren't what you guys were hoping for this year do you think it's fixable at this point in the season yeah it's right it's, we're just working on Kansas City not worried about the yearly review we're just gonna work on Kansas City Try to make plays we need to make to win. Are you pleased with where the run game's at right now? I think I said after the game that everybody we need to be better at everything, and that's nothing's changed since Monday or Sunday, whenever I said it. Uh, Bill, I want to ask about uh, tendencies with James White. Obviously, his strength is when he's out there uh, uh, catching passes, but uh, how do you balance uh, taking advantage of a player's strengths? Uh, James White running routes, uh, Sony running up the middle. Uh, versus teams catching on to, oh, when James is in the game, they drop back to pass X amount of times, or when Sony's in the game, they run the ball up the middle X amount of times? Yeah, well, I mean, I think both players have run and caught the ball. Not in the same percentages, but, you know, we've utilized both players, and we'll continue to do that. But, yeah, players have certain strengths. I think you want to play to those strengths. I think you want to keep, you know, just to be different, change, do things that players, you have other players that can do them better, you want to try to let those players do them. So, but I think both guys have done both. I'm sure they'll continue to do both. Sourcing? Uh, Bill, uh, in addition to Matthew, uh, Frank Clark is a guy that they've had for that defense, one of the notable uh, players they've brought over. What kind of a difference have you seen uh, him make for Kansas City? Yeah, I mean, he's a good edge player. He's, you know, a very disruptive guy. It's definitely a challenge to block. So, you know, it's really a D4 replacement. More? Well, the Chiefs had to work through some injuries and suspensions earlier this year. Would you say, based on what you see on the field now, they're full throttle on offense, at least coming into this game? Looks like they may have been pretty full throttle all year. Bill Perry? Bill, I'm just um, curious if you've seen or what you or how you've seen uh, Brendan Daly's influence show up. Um, in Kansas City's defensive line play? Um, I mean, you know, they play the scheme that they play. 
you know, Brennan's a good fundamental coach. We know that. And how exactly the input works there in terms of who, you know, who decides what and whose ideas are what they do and all that. I, you know, have to ask him. I have no idea. But Brennan's a good coach. He's a good fundamental coach. And I'm sure those guys are being coached well like they were here. Two final questions, Zach Cox. Have the current kickoff rules changed the way you guys approach onside kicks at all? I saw Jake tried out two kind of unorthodox kick styles in this last game. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the second onside kick is like, that's the oldest kick in football. I mean, that's basically what every high school team uses. I mean, uh, yeah. That's pretty much been the onside kick for the last 50 or more years. I'm not really sure about that one. The ball flat on the ground. Yeah, I mean, we uh, – who kicked that against us a couple of weeks ago? Um, so, you know, look, there's a lot of alternative kicks. You know, people used to overload and, you know, spike the ball to the overload side. Obviously, you can't do that anymore. So you see some balls kicked one way. You see balls kicked to the other side. You see a mark kick on the down the middle. You know, drop kick. I mean, we've seen a variety of those, probably more so in the last two years than you know we've seen in a long time before that. So, yeah, when the formation in the field's balanced, you, you can't overload it. So you have to you know try to find a space to hit it. But I would say the second kick is about. I, I can't imagine there've been more onside kicks, style-wise. Than that one, I mean, that's got to be by far the most prevalent one in all of football. I was just saying where the, the ball was not set up on the tee, it was leaning on the side. Whether, well, regardless of whether you put it on the tee or not, it's about hitting the ball and, you know, driving it two, three, and then it bounces up, you know, after it goes about 15, 20 yards. So you're kicking the top of the ball wherever you want to tee it up, tee it up, but it's the same thing. Last question, Mark Daniels. Is Terry Kill one of the fastest players you've coached against? And just how difficult of a challenge is it um, you know, game planning for a player like that? Yeah, he definitely is. I mean, does anybody not think he's the fastest player in the league? Or I don't know. I mean, one of the many players come along there. I know you don't have a stopwatch, but. Yeah, I mean, one of the turns doesn't make. Once they're faster than everybody else, I mean, they're like faster than everybody else, so. Yeah, he's fast. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Uh, practice is at 105, uh, lower grass.